Good day everyone. It is nice to see you again. Welcome to our any learning as our learning community. Lesson 1. Shock. Shock is the common denominator in a wide variety of disease processes that present as an immediate threat to life. Simply defined, shock is inadequate tissue perfusion. This inadequate tissue perfusion is the result of failure of one or more of the following, the heart pump failure, blood volume, arterial resistance vessels, and the capacity of the venous beds. Any condition that significantly affects any of the above may precipitate a shock state. Classification of shock. The four main categories of shock are as follows. 1. Cardiogenic shock. 2. Hypovolemic shock. 3. Distributive shock. Under distributive shock, we have the following. Neurogenic shock. Anaphylactic shock. And septic shock. 4. Obstructive shock. Cardiogenic shock. Cardiogenic shock occurs when either systolic or diastolic dysfunction of the heart's pumping action results in reduced cardiac output. Decreased filling of the heart results in decreased stroke volume. The heart's inability to pump the blood forward is called systolic dysfunction. Hypovolemic shock. Hypovolemic shock occurs after a loss of intravascular fluid volume. The volume is inadequate to fill the vascular space. The two examples of hypovolemia are as follows. 1. Absolute hypovolemia results when fluid is lost through hemorrhage, gastrointestinal loss, for instance, vomiting, diarrhea, fistula drainage, diabetes insipidus, or diuresis. 2. Relative hypovolemia. The fluid volume moves out of the vascular space into the extravascular space, for instance, intracavitary space. This type of fluid shift is called third spacing. Under distributive shock, we have the following. Neurogenic shock. Neurogenic shock is a hemodynamic phenomenon that can occur within 30 minutes of a spinal cord injury at the fifth thoracic. T5, vertebra or above, it can last up to 6 weeks. The injury results in a massive vasodilation without compensation, because of the loss of SNS vasoconstricted tone. This massive vasodilation leads to a pooling of blood in the blood vessels, tissue hyperperfusion, and ultimately impaired cellular metabolism. Anaphylactic shock. Anaphylactic shock is an acute life-threatening hypersensitivity, allergic, reaction to a sensitizing substance, for instance, drug, chemical, vaccine, food, insect venom. The reaction quickly causes massive vasodilation, release of assorptive mediators, and an increase in capillary permeability. Anaphylactic shock can lead to respiratory distress due to laryngeal edema or severe bronchospasm and circulatory failure from the massive vasodilation. Septic shock. Sepsis is a systemic inflammatory response to a documented or suspected infection. Septic shock is the presence of sepsis with hypertension despite adequate fluid resuscitation, along with inadequate tissue perfusion resulting in tissue hypoxia. The main organisms that cause sepsis are gram-negative and gram-positive bacteria. Parasites, fungi, and viruses can also cause sepsis and septic shock. And lastly, obstructive shock. Obstructive shock develops when a physical obstruction to blood flow occurs with a decreased cardiac output. Table 1 shows the types of shocks, its causes and examples. Cardiogenic shock. One of the causes is systolic dysfunction, meaning inability of the heart to pump blood forward. Examples are as follows. Myocardial infarction, cardiomyopathy, blunt cardiac injury, severe systemic or pulmonary hypertension, and myocardial depression from metabolic problems. Another cause is diastolic dysfunction, meaning inability of the heart to fill. For example, cardiac tamponade, ventricular hypertrophy, and cardiomyopathy. Third cause is dysrhythmia. For example we have bradydysrhythmias and tachydysrhythmias. 
and lastly structural factors, such as, valvular stenosis or regurgitation, ventricular septal rupture, and tension pneumothorax. Hypovolemic shock. Under absolute hypovolemia, external loss of whole blood, for example, hemorrhage from trauma, surgery, and gastrointestinal bleeding. Next is loss of other body fluids, for example, vomiting, diarrhea, excess of diuresis, diabetes insipidus, and diabetes mellitus. Under relative hypovolemia, the first cause is pooling of blood or fluids, for example, bowel obstruction. Next is fluid shifts, for example, burn injuries, ascites. For internal bleeding, examples are as follows. Fracture of long bones, ruptured spleen, hemothorax, and severe pancreatitis. And lastly, massive vasodilation. For example, sepsis. Next is distributive shock, under neurogenic shock, hemodynamic consequence of spinal cord injury and or disease at or above T5, spinal anesthesia, and the somatocentered depression. For example, severe pain, drugs, hypoglycemia, and injury, under anaphylactic shock, the cause is hypersensitivity, or allergic reaction to a sensitizing substance. For example, contrast media, blood, or blood products, drugs, insect bites, anesthetic agents, food, or food additives, vaccines, environmental agents, and latex. And lastly, septic shock. The first one is infection. Examples are as follows, pneumonia, peritonitis, urinary tract, invasive procedures, indwelling lines and catheters. Next is at-risk patients. For examples, we have, older adults, patients with chronic diseases, for instance, diabetes mellitus, chronic kidney disease, heart failure, and patients receiving immunosuppressive therapy, or who are malnourished or debilitated. And lastly, the last type, distributive shock. Due to physical obstruction impeding the filling or outflow of blood resulting in reduced cardiac output. For example, cardiac tamponade, tension pneumothorax, superior vena cava syndrome, abdominal compartment syndrome, and pulmonary embolism. Kindly click the next button for part 2. Thank you for listening. Have a good day, and be safe. Agyamanak.